a girl hears a knock on the door. She rushes to open it, while the other girls urge her to calm down and not open the door. She doesn't listen and tries to peek outside, only to get hit by an arrow. Let's find out what kind of Hunger Games are going on here. Tess is looking for something in the attic when her elder sister, Beth, arrives and reprimands her for rummaging around her house. Tess assures she wasn't going to steal Beth's vine collection so she can calm down. We learn the sisters are not on good terms. Later, Tess meets with Beth's friends, Bridget and Divya. They congratulate Tess on being six months sober. Tess doesn't like that Beth has told them about this. Now we learn that the girls are going for their youngest sister, Rose's bachelor's party, in their parents' farm that is in the middle of nowhere. Tess thought the two were going to be driving alone, but Beth invited her friends to drive along. Beth reminds Tess that she doesn't like anyone in the entire world, and the sisters get into another hurting each other's ego battle. On the road, the four girls meet the other two high school friends, Esther and Mia, in a store. Soon, they receive filthy comments from three disgusting men and try to avoid it, but Tess arrives. As the two girls leave, Tess talks back to those men with her calm composure. She asks one of the men to remove the army cap if he didn't serve. The other man, Perry, remarks that he has served, but Tess disregards his small service of 86 days and reveals that she has been in a war, which is the real service. Outside, she scratches the men's car before driving off. Once at the farm, they meet their little sister Rose and her friend Noelle. Tess is a bit suspicious of the new caretakers, and despite Beth's insistence, she sneaks inside their shed and hopes to find something about them. She hides behind the bed as the men arrive and hears them talking about something big they have been waiting for a long time and must accomplish tonight. One of the caretakers gets Beth's call, asking if he has seen Tess, but he says that he didn't see her. As soon as he ends the call, his sweet demeanor changes to being annoyed with Beth. Tess gets back to the house and finds a man in the kitchen. He introduces himself as the chef, but Tess starts questioning him, feeling weird that she didn't know he was coming. Beth then gets there and asks to talk to Tess. After chef leaves, Beth loses her calm on Tess, blaming her for trying to ruin their sister's day. She asks Tess to be a little less controlling and at least pretend to care about letting Rose have a good time. Tess tries to tell Beth about her doubts about the caretakers, but Beth gets angrier, finding out that Tess went inside their place just because she was suspicious. She informs her that she called her parents and learned that the new guys were hired not so long ago. Tess asks how she called as there is no signal there and Beth angrily reminds her that they can get a signal by leaning out from the bedroom window. And folks, that's how we learn there are no signals. Later at night, the girls enjoy the chef's show, as he is also a stripper, while Tess sits on the porch. Rose comes out looking for Tess and has a heart-to-heart -heart with her as the lovely sister she is. Tess apologizes that she didn't want to ruin her night, and Rose assures that she is happy Tess is here. Just then, an arrow hits Rose in the chest as Beth can only scream in shock. Rose gets hurriedly taken inside while the arrows keep flying towards them. Rose asks Beth to call 911 through the window, but she is too shocked to even move. Esther volunteers to call instead and goes upstairs with the phone. The chef starts consoling the woman, but gets the arrow in his eyes pretty soon. The girls start getting distressed, and Tess calms them down as a car pulls up in front of the house. She instructs everyone to lock all the doors and turn out all the lights. After they are finished, Tess asks all of them to keep trying to call 911. But Divya keeps getting annoyed as she questions Tess as if she knows all the answers. Tess asks all the girls to collect everything around the house to use as a weapon. She looks out the window to find that a man is slashing their tires and asks Divya to lock the door behind her. 
noting that she is going to knock twice and then once, which would be the signal that it's her. She is not supposed to open the door at any other knock. Tess gets outside and easily kills the guy who was slashing their car before getting back inside. In the house, the girls have collected all the sharp objects. She gives everyone a weapon and asks them to be ready to use it. Beth says that she is scared as she only wants to go back home to see her daughter. Tess assures her that she will see them again and apologizes for always fighting with her. But Beth says it's always her fault and they reconcile. Tess then goes upstairs to check on Esther but finds her body in the window. Downstairs, she tells everyone about Esther and asks them to stay inside the house as they are safe there. Divya doesn't believe Tess and starts blaming her for Esther as she sent her upstairs knowing it was dangerous. Well, now I know who I want to get the next arrow. Everyone asks Divya to shut up and Tess asks Divya to take the lead and tell them how they can survive as she has such a big mouth. Just then, a man from outside asks them how their party is going. Tess lies and says they have called the police, but the man reveals that he knows they don't have a signal. He gives them a chance to come outside and run off to safety so that his men can get inside and start looking for the thing they want. Otherwise, he assures them that he will make them suffer. The other girls think they should believe him, but Tess and Beth assure that there is nothing important inside the house. Tess believes that the man is tricking them into coming out. Beth screams that they don't have anything in the house, and the man suggests they open the door so the men can look around and make sure she is being honest. Tess recognizes the man's voice to be the guy from the store, Perry. The girls ask what Tess did to them for them to follow her here. They ask Tess to apologize to them to get this over with, but Tess doesn't think they are the forgiving kind. Well, obviously. Divya again starts being irritating, remarking that they shouldn't trust Tess. Bridget then asks Tess to save them as she is the soldier person. But Mia and Beth ask her to stop being such a bee. Perry declares that the time is over, so now he is going to make them suffer. A while later, Perry's friend approaches him to inform about one of their friends that Tess has killed. Perry gets enraged realizing that it was Tess, the army girl, and remarks that he only wanted to scare them. But now, he is going to make them pay for this. You know, Perry, your guys just did kill two people. Talk about hypocrisy. His friend is scared and believes they should just leave as they had gotten enough meth to sell from the caretakers. But Perry says he has been planning this for six months and there is a lot of cash inside the house, so they are going to get it done. Inside, Divya says they should all run out at once in hopes that some of them would survive instead of waiting for the guys to get inside and kill them. Tess thinks it would work, but the other girls don't think they can run that far. Tess then says that one of them needs to run out to the caretaker's place where she has seen a landline phone. They must also distract the men outside as bait so that Tess can then run to the nearby shed where her father used to keep his gun. Mia volunteers to run as bait, remarking that she has run track in college. Everyone bids Mia a tearful goodbye, hoping that she survives. She takes the chef's sneakers and confesses that she had a crush on Tess for a long time, but never had the guts to ask her out. She gets out of the house and calls out to the men and runs off. She gets to the caretaker's place and tries to call 911, but the phone line doesn't work. Just then, another masked man gets there, but Mia uses an artifact to attack him repeatedly and runs off towards freedom. Tess also leaves for the shed after reminding Divya to only open the door for her. In the shed, she finds the caretakers tied up with plastic wrapped around their heads. One of them is still alive. Tess asks him what is going on. The caretaker reveals that those men found out about the money stacked in the house that they earned with the illegal product they have been selling. She unties him, remarking that he is going to help her save her friends. She goes to take the gun and finds the cupboard empty. 
the caretaker turns out to be a coward as he decides to run for it but gets killed midway by another masked man. The man blames Tess for killing his friend and asks her to run if she doesn't want to die. Tess says that she doesn't run and ends up killing him as well. She takes an axe to save her friends. Meanwhile, in the house, Divya hears a knock and stupidly rushes to open the door, despite everyone reminding her about Tess's knock pattern. She still opens the door just wide enough to get hit by an arrow. Yes, about time. The men break the door while the other girls scatter around the house to hide, but soon get caught one after another. Bridget begs Perry to spare them, as she isn't the one who offended him, blaming everything on Tess. But Perry kills her first. He orders the other girls to stay quiet and instructs his two remaining men to keep an eye on them while he collects the money from the attic. Tess sneaks inside the house and signals Noelle, who starts teasing one of the guys as she finds a knife near her feet. She goes to her knees to tease him some more, and when Tess gives her the signal, she uses the knife on the man, just as Tess also attacks the other one. The two girls pounce on the man to finish him off, and Tess instructs the two to run away afterwards as she goes upstairs to deal with Perry. She tells him that this is the last one left, and Perry gives her a chance to escape and let him be. But Tess doesn't accept his offer, remarking that she wants to kill him instead. They get into a tough struggle, but Tess obviously overpowers and kills him. Now, Tess is being interviewed by a sheriff in presence of her lawyer. The sheriff refuses to believe what happened, but Tess stays true to her story without a care for his ignorance. He warns her about all the lawsuits coming her way, and Tess leaves the office. She meets Beth and Noel outside and hugs them before leaving. She scratches the sheriff's car and then drives off with Mia while she holds Tess's hand. And the film ends as Tess stares out the window with teary eyes. Well, there certainly was a lot happening in that movie. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you would like to watch more from Movie Shortens, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified about when our next video is posted. Thanks for watching.